In April 2018, I was coming back from my operating flight to Toronto, Canada. In arrival to Dubai, I been surprised. There was about seven Emirati intelligent officer was waiting for me with one Emirati lady. And they took me, as soon as they got me, they took everything with me. I'm talking about my bags, my devices, and they start asking me a question in the airport for about two hours. Hanan al Atar was detained in Dubai on April 21st, 2018. Her devices were seized. She was interrogated for 17 hours, then put under house arrest. In Middle East, you have no choice either. You comply with them or they beat you and torture you. Then they took me to my house, blind me and handcuff me. I was feeling ill and I was feeling panic. I couldn't control myself. Al Atar was engaged to the Saudi journalist Jamal Khashoggi. I wasn't worried about my myself because I have nothing to hide. The only thing I was feeling uncomfortable for them to see it, the love messages between me and Jamal. It's very special message between two lovers. I don't want them to see or read this. I start uh, just feel like they are watching me, but how much they are watching, how much they can get, I don't know. And in the same time, I cannot speak to anyone to advise me because it's become very sensitive and scary. New reporting by The Post has found evidence that a spyware called Pegasus, manufactured by the Israeli company NSO Group, was in the process of being installed on her phone while she was detained. Forensic analysis by a Citizen Lab researcher identified the exact moment that a unique URL connected to Pegasus was entered into her device. So basically what I did is I analyzed all the available data on uh, two Android phones and, and one laptop uh, belonging to Hanan. He told Alata recently what he'd found. The scene was filmed by the PBS program Frontline and Forbidden Stories for an upcoming documentary. It appears that there were two separate links to the Pegasus spyware that were actually opened. In other words, uh, the infection process for the spyware was initiated at least twice on one of the devices. And one of the dates of the initiation of the, of the infection was uh, April 22nd which uh, yes. I understand uh, on this date, uh, Hanan uh, was, was in custody and her phones yes. were removed uh, yes. from her. So she was not, uh, as I understand it, using uh, her phone at this time. He confirmed to me when I was with them in a detention point, they tried to use all spying material and technology to getting and to make sure to continue watch in my devices, basically because of Jamal. So someone was sitting with the phone and they typed in you know, the first character, H, then T, then T, then P, then S for HTTPS. Then they typed in the name of the website um, and it, they made a couple typos actually while they were doing it, which tells me it was done manually. Um, it wasn't copied and pasted. It was actually someone sitting there with the keyboard uh, typing the link into the phone. Pegasus can provide complete access to a target's mobile device, including their location, messaging, camera, microphone, and more. Marzak could not determine precisely what the spyware did to al Atar's phone. NSO Group has firmly denied that their product was used against al Atar, saying, NSO Group conducted a review which determined that Pegasus was not used to listen to, monitor, track, or collect information about Ms. al -Atar. The Post's continued efforts to falsely connect NSO Group to the heinous murder of Mr. Khashoggi are baffling. The government of the United Arab Emirates did not respond to multiple requests for comment, but has denied previous allegations around al Atar's case. I shook how much they invaded my life, how much they become closer to Jamal Khashoggi to chase his movement and to make a trap for him in Istanbul to be killed. al Atar and Jamal Khashoggi were married in June of 2018. For the next four months, they lived largely apart, but she was in constant touch with him on her mobile devices. 
he was in communication with me until 24 hours before he disappeared. And he sent me uh, last communication was wishing for my birthday. And he tried to call me. I found a missed call. On October 2nd, Khashoggi walked into the Saudi consulate in Istanbul, where he was murdered and dismembered by a Saudi hit team. I feel very sad about it. I feel terrible. I feel terrible they, they misused me somehow without I realize, because they know he loved me. He knows that he speaks to me fairly about everything he's thinking. He cried to me, he talked to me about everything because I'm his lover. And basically, it was easy to get him, to hunt him through me. I don't know why I'm still alive. I don't know. Every day when I see the daylight, I don't know why I'm still alive. Because I'm the second victim after Jamal. In his tragedy, I'm the second victim. I lost my life.